Marvel fans, last night was the world premiere of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, the first project in Marvel's Phase 5. And the social media embargo has lifted. People that have seen the movie are giving their first take, their reactions, their first reviews of the film. And they're way more mixed than I wanted. No, what's going on? And so we've got a lot to do in this video. The first thing I want to do is look at some of the very positive first reactions for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Then I want want to get into some of the more mixed and or negative reactions that people have had to the film. And then we're going to end the video with a little bit of tea. I'm going to tell you what some people have told me behind the scenes, and I'm not going to lie to you, it is kind of brutal. There's a major discussion to be had here as many Marvel fans are looking for Phase 5 to be much better than Phase 4, and this being the movie that kicks all of that off, I think is this is actually really incredibly important. And of course, these are all just early reviews and these are other people's opinions and we all have to see the movie for ourselves. But I'd be lying to you if I said I was not concerned. I actually expected to wake up this morning to nothing but awesomeness. People being absolutely blown away and just telling me how absolutely cool this is. I expected to hear things like the MCU is back. And unfortunately, I think this might be another mixed bag that leaves fans on unsure footing at possibly the worst moment. But okay, so let's get into the really positive reviews because many of you guys seen what I'm talking about on Twitter and you're already flooding me with all of these positive reactions that people have had because I've been kind of speaking about the more mixed and more negative things out there and I totally get it. Here's the thing. There are obviously people that really liked this movie and I'm going to put up a bunch of those tweets right now. So first up you have Eric Davis of Fandango. He says phase five has begun. The new Ant-Man movie is like like a psychedelic roller coaster full of frightening and hilarious oddities, plus one very menacing Kang. Big Star Wars vibes meet the MCU at its freakiest and most inventive. Modoc is a riot, but Jonathan Majors conquers. Loved the ride. Next up, the Adam Review says Quantum Mania Review, scary and shocking game changer. Marvel is back with a fun, wild adventure. This isn't just another superhero movie, it's one of the best sci fi films. Ever. Wow, a fitting end to her journey while also setting up what's next. FICO says, Hey man, and the Wasp Quantum Mini is the best of the trilogy. Higher stakes, dangers, and repercussion. It's also got one of the best MCU villains in Kang. As soon as Jonathan Majors comes in, it's his show. Kang is scary, lean, mean, multiversal, big baddie. Also, too cold post credit scenes. Daniel Baptista of the Movie Podcast says, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania is a solid yet overly ambitious start to the next phase of the MCU. Jonathan Majors is an absolute force as Kang and the new king of the multiverse. The final battle is astonishing, but I really miss the comedic charm throughout. Dempsey Pilot says, had a blast with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Paul Rudd has never been better and Jonathan Majors effortlessly conquers every second of screen time he gets, but the real star of the film is Jeff Loveness's script, a reminder of how beautifully strange and mysterious the MCU still is. Is. So, okay, those are some really positive reviews. And again, it's obvious that a lot of people like the movie. There's even somebody mentioning the MCU being back. And yes, that does excite me. And if it were left just there, you guys would all be like, Josh, you're crazy. People love this movie. It's going to be freaking awesome. Let's get the hype going. But unfortunately, there's more to the story. And I think the obvious thing that we have to say here is that many people, when they leave a Marvel premiere, are very, very positive on the movie, perhaps a little bit more positive than they will be when they put their critical brain on later on. Especially recently with Phase 4, it's often the case that you see a lot of really glowing, you know, kind of vague tweets and reactions to a particular MCU movie, and then you look at the Rotten Tomato score, and you're like, what happened? Why is there seemingly such a difference between the glowing things people say in the immediate 
immediate afterglow of the premiere and what they put into their Rotten Tomatoes reviews. And I also just want to say that maybe some of the people we just put up on screen are some of your favorites and you find that your taste aligns with these folks, right? But that's not the case with me. I don't really align with any of the people that we just put up on screen. I'm going to go through a bunch of people that I more closely align with, at least as far as past movies. And they're also folks that I trust just a little bit more because again, there is this side of this thing where you kind of want to be positive about Marvel stuff so that you keep being invited to the premieres. And so let's start with Christian Harloff, one of the OGs in the movie review space. He says, so Ant-Man the Wasp Quantum Mania goes hard in the paint as the big epic sci-fi film, blending Star Wars, Fifth Element, Dune, plus Strange World. I don't think it's going to work for everyone, but I really dug this tone. It's a bit chaotic towards the end, but wraps up nicely. Kang rules. And again, nothing to necessarily panic about here. This isn't a bad review. He's saying that he personally liked it, but he's basically admitting that it's chaotic and that it might not work for everybody. Now, here's what Matt Ramos Soups had to say about the movie. He said, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is truly episode one of what is sure to be a crazy cinematic series. You have to enjoy this movie more as an episode of something greater rather than its own standalone film that concludes a trilogy. And Matt follows this up by saying Jonathan Majors is him and it's the standout. There's two post credit scenes and they will leave you hyped. The quantum realm is explored in a very creative way. MODOK gets done dirty. The third act picks up in the film in a very big way. That's all I'll say for now. So again, not necessarily anything to really be concerned here, but it is interesting that Matt is saying that this movie is best enjoyed when thought of as the beginning chapter of a big story and that it doesn't necessarily work on its own as a movie or as the third film in a trilogy. Now, here's what Greg Alba said of The Real Rejects. He said, I just got out of Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania and he has this picture. And if you watch the video, it's actually hilarious. Check this out. I don't know about this one. I have mixed feelings. And so again, he's not necessarily saying anything really bad about the movie, but clearly saying that he has mixed feelings about the film. Here's what Richard Nebin says, and this is a gentleman from The Direct. He says, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania takes a big swings, hits on most, but not all. Captivating visuals, which elevate a fun story, but some stakes were lacking. Kang is here. What an incredible performance by Jonathan Majors. Overall, a solid start to phase five. And so again, like nothing too bad, right? You guys are still probably watching this video. Like, Josh, what are you talking about? Why are you so concerned? And don't worry, we will get there. But again, I think it's interesting to look at him saying it doesn't hit on everything. And there were stakes that were lacking. He's saying it was lacking stakes. Courtney Howard says, after a frustratingly rough act one, Quantum Mania finally gets going only to end where the story should have began. While the external stakes are clear and weighty, emotional drive felt slight and levity even lighter. That said, Jonathan Majors rules. And so again, guys, I think you have to take into context here. This is a person that can't even tell you whether or not they liked the movie, and yet she is talking about a very frustrating act one, the fact that it ends where it should have began, there was light levity, and the emotional drive wasn't there. These are not things you want to be hearing when it comes to the first movie in phase five. And the last one we're going to go over here is is E-Man Emmanuel from E-Man's Movie Reviews. He says, just saw Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania. It's so weird and visually felt like a new world. Jonathan Majors as Kang is the best part, period. Wish we got more Wasp. Paul Rudd was hilarious, after, although other jokes were chuckles at best. Felt like just another Ant-Man movie. And I know there's a way to look at this and say, oh, well, that's not that bad. But guys, look, it... <laughs> He's literally saying that it's a sort of joke fest that some of them don't land and it's basically just another Ant-Man movie. He calls the movie weird, praises Jonathan Majors, but I mean, if you just look at this, this is not a person that really loved the film. Now, I also did watch Grace Randolph's first reaction to the film and she 
hints a lot in her video that this might not be a great movie and that it's a movie she thinks might not do well. She was saying this might perform at the level of Thor Love and Thunder. Now, she doesn't necessarily say that the movie is like Love and Thunder, and oh my god, I hope it's not. I would really hope that it's much better than Love and Thunder that I consider to be the worst MCU movie ever. But nonetheless, if you look at all of these reviews and you combine them all together, it seems like we've got another mixed bag on our hands. But now I've got to tell you some of the tea and some of the stuff I was told behind the scenes because it's kind of terrifying. And before we get into that, I just want to warn you again, this is just based on other people seeing the movie, okay? And we all have to see the movie for ourselves. But I do just want to let you know that I've been told behind the scenes from some very reliable people that the consensus on this movie is that it's very bad. And some of the people that I talked to actually hated the movie, actively thought it was absolutely terrible. And here's the broad strokes of what a lot of people are telling me behind the scenes. Number one, the movie lacks stakes. And I'm not going to get too far into that, but if you know about the plot leaks, which by the way are absolutely real, then you'll probably be able to come to a conclusion as to why that is. But regardless, that is like the exact opposite of what they needed to do here. I was also told that even though Kang is really cool in the movie, he's actually really weird and goofy. And although the performance is incredible, Kang as a character doesn't really hold up to a lot of the other Marvel villains. And I I've even had people tell me, like, they don't think this Kang that's in this movie should be the big bad of the next two Avengers films. I've been told that MODOK is so bad in the movie, it will be another Ralph Boner. It'll be something that Marvel will not live down, that fans will be bringing up and memeing on for years to come. I've also been told that unfortunately visually the movie doesn't hold up and that the quantum realm looks really weird and fake. This having to do with using the volume and I don't know, I guess just bad design. And the thing is, this is really weird. I know many of you are probably watching this video getting mad at me, angry that I'm even putting this out there in the universe. But the thing is, you and I both want this movie to be awesome. We both want phase five to start out with a bang for us to put phase four behind us and to be looking forward to the future content getting excited about the multiverse and everything to come with kang and i think just as a small caveat to all the sort of negative stuff we've talked about in this video the two post credit scenes which did leak recently and we talked about them are apparently incredible probably worth the price of admission and good enough to still get us really hyped up on what is to come but for me as a fan, I'm in this really weird spot because I'm not satisfied with a lot of what Marvel has done recently. I want them to return to form. And frankly, if this movie is a stinker, it's going to be very difficult for me to not be very hard on the movie. Not because I want to be a hater, not because I want to make negative content, but because I must break through this weird situation where I don't think Marvel is getting the proper criticism and really like learning and knowing from the fans of stuff that we don't want anymore. And if this is like another phase four, four movie essentially with some cool phase five trappings i'm gonna want as a fan and as a person with a platform to express my dislike of that because i want marvel to know dude a lot of fans don't like that. You need to change. And that's going to leave us in a weird spot because I don't want to be super negative, but I desperately want Marvel to get their quality under control, especially as we're headed towards Secret Wars. I don't want to be like getting ready for Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars and being like, okay, here we go. Probably going to be 50% as cool as what Endgame and Infinity War is going to be. No, I want to be blown away and I want to have watched a catalog of incredibly well-crafted films that fit together in a really unique way that have this massive payoff in the next two Avengers movies. You know, like what it was like in phases one, two, and three. Like, this is not the video I wanted to make today. It's not even the video I thought I'd have to make today as I was getting lost in the hype for Quantumania. And I guess ultimately what this all comes down to is that I'm unfortunately going to have to walk 
into the theater next Thursday with a lot of skepticism. I'm trying to curb my enthusiasm and hopefully I'm still just blown away and hopefully I can do videos and do a stream and say that everybody was wrong. But until that time, I just have to report on what's out there and what I was told privately. And I just got to tell you guys, uh, well, it ain't looking good. Smash a like on this video if you liked it and just smash a like anyways, because everybody's going to be all mad at me and they're probably going to dislike it. So just hit like. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and the live streaming channel because we give away dope nerdy things to lucky subscribers each and every month. And if you want to watch more and you're curious about those leaked post credits, why not watch this video below where I recently broke it all down?